some kid is is tortured on Facebook, where maybe some girl was overserved at a party, they took pictures, and now they're all over the net. And there's there's many forms of this. And I, as a parent, and my daughters are 18 and 19 years old, respectively, so I'm kind of past this area. We were late to the party when it came to the social media. It was kind of towards the end of their high school careers. So in, in a good – I'm, I'm – I'm happy to say that we never had to go through anything like this, and on you know online or offline. But I'm I'm wondering whose responsibility this is. I I don't know that this is teachers' responsibilities. I don't know that this is law enforcement's responsibility. I think ultimately it's parents' responsibility. But that's a tough one because nobody wants to admit they have the ugly kid. Nobody wants to admit they have the fat kid. Nobody wants to admit they have a bullying kid. Although I bet everyone know that everyone knows that they do. I'm not sure that everyone knows that their kid's being bullied, however, which is really tragic. Les Ottolinghi is the producer of a documentary called Submit. I, I think it's called Submit the Documentary or Submit. I'll have to ask him that. But he made a documentary that tells the stories of families affected by cyberbullying. Les joins us here on News Radio 600. Kogo, Les, thanks for swinging by. Hello, how are you doing? Good, Les. What, first of all, what is the name of the documentary so I get that right? It's called Submit. And that's just the short name, but it is Submit the Documentary. Okay, Submit the Documentary. Tell us about it. Give me, give me a 50,000-foot view of what it's about. Absolutely. It's the stories of cyberbullying victims, their families, the school teachers, the uh, civic organizers, the law enforcement, and everybody who surrounds this topic when a child gets bullied online. So describe bullied online for me. Sure. Bullied online, like you were saying in, in the uh, lead-up to this segment, is uh, a number of things. It can be just the bad words used against a child who has a profile, say, on Facebook or a Twitter account. Or it can be very aggressive behavior, which tries to get the kid or the child to submit to certain actions, like posting a nude photo of themselves. Or it could be uh, even worse. It could be a suggestion of suicide. And our documentary covers that, those topics and more. But we obviously see that the effects of cyberbullying can be very devastating on the person who is being bullied. In many cases, unfortunately, the child will take their own life. You know, the interesting part about this, and, and I, I saw a clip for the documentary, and you can too, by going to Kogo.com keyword, Sully. It's, it's, it's pretty powerful stuff. But 90% of kids who say they've witnessed something inappropriate bullying-wise online have done nothing about it. In other words... Uh, They've also said that they would do something about it if they saw it happen on the street. So why is it acceptable online? Why do we find behavior that's acceptable or, or unacceptable uh, in, in our daily life acceptable online? Is it simply because of the anonymity involved? Yeah, absolutely. You bring up a great point. The biggest issue about cyberbullying is that there are a lot of bystanders, kids who are willing to do nothing about the situation or not respond. In many cases, they're afraid that they may be bullied later if they actually stand up for somebody. But it's the anonymity of being online and the distance that that anonymity provides from any real action against a bully that actually encourages the bullying to occur. So my question would be, enter the law. Has there ever been a kid that's been convicted of cyberbullying? Because I know uh, we reported on, what, maybe seven or eight uh, suicides last year alone? On, uh, yeah. uh, on cyberbullying, I mean, I, there may have been more, but I, the bottom line is I don't think there was any convictions, were there? Uh, no, there are, are, have not been any convictions for cyberbullying. It is not classified, say, as a uh, hate crime uh, and has not been criminalized um, in any serious way across the country. And frankly, when we talk to experts, experts who are in our field in, in our film, are they all advocate not criminalizing these behaviors, but starting at a different point which actually can do something about the cyberbullying behavior, which is empathy training, but then the right socialization. You brought up a point just a moment ago that your, your daughters are 18 and 19, and they are kind of on the tail end of social media. The fact of the matter is you as a parent, me as a parent, we don't even know what to tell our kids to do to act properly online. In other words, there hasn't been a generation of kids that have grown up with this technology that knows then how to tell their kids what to do about it. But isn't it, but isn't it as simple as saying, look, if it's unacceptable that you witness it on the street, then it's unacceptable the witnessing it online. Absolutely. But it's also the context. In other words, 
if you don't know what Snapchat is, and I don't know if Sully, if you yeah, know sure, Snapchat yeah, Snapchat. Is. Snapchat is one of those apps that where where kids can send pictures to. In fact, my daughters do it to me all the time when I'm on the radio. They'll send me a stupid picture to maybe try to crack out while I'm on the air. But you can take a picture of yourself. It goes to your friend. And it only appears for a few seconds and disappears. So my kids will do stuff, crazy stuff, like act like they're breaking into my house. Or they'll, they'll do stuff like act like they're, gonna, they're about to break my window. And they send it to me while I'm on the air. That's fun. Snapchat can also be used for some pretty nefarious reasons. Absolutely. And the fact is, you're an, you sound like an educated parent. You know what's going on because you're really well involved with your children. But if you're not involved with their day-to-day behavior and don't know all the nuances of Facebook or Twitter or whatever the latest thing is, then you're going to be disconnected from telling them, hey, you know, that's not appropriate. And the younger the child is, you could tell them, hey, you don't do that in the real world. But maybe they've never faced it in the real world and they've only faced it online. And therefore, they're in a completely new context and they are the ones in charge of their own behavior, and that's really part of the problem. So for you, from where you're sitting, and by the way, I want to introduce you to Les Ottolenghi. He Les is the, the producer of Submit, Submit the Documentary. We've got a very uh, comprehensive clip on Kogo.com, keyword Sully, to talk about cyberbullying. And, and according to everything I'm reading and everything that I've researched, and every time we cover this on the air, cyberbullying is getting worse. What is the answer? Well, uh, <laughs> the answer is, is uh, first and foremost, awareness. And you're doing a great thing by bringing attention to this topic. Um, most parents, and you said this earlier, are not aware that their kids uh, are being cyber bullied or maybe that their child is a cyber bully. Uh, most kids don't talk to their parents about it. So there's already a disconnect in the, uh, the family function of learning how to behave properly or do the right things. Um, that's number one. So awareness is key ingredient, and that's the reason we made the film and why we offer it to schools and civic organizations and to any group who wants to screen it. We offer it for free um, because we're, we're not trying to make a profit off of this. We're trying to bring people's attention to it. But with that, then there is awareness. There's an opportunity for the parents to get involved, and that's the most important factor here. Parents need to talk to their kids about it. Kids need to be able to feel that they could open up to their parents without getting their smartphone taken away or their Facebook access and privilege taken away or whatever else the parent may think is the right behavior in order to modify what happens online. And really what we advocate is that those steps occur, awareness and then discussion between parent and child. There are several programs now that are coming out for training about what are the appropriate behaviors online, like Internet 101. Right. And those are being you know, really proliferated through the school systems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, like, when, you, when you know, and you know you're there, by the way, when you have to ask your kid how to do something on your smartphone or your computer, you, you, you know at that point you probably need to go take a class to catch up with them because they're, they're involved in things that you have no idea how, how they can even be involved in. One last question for you. How can people see this documentary, Les? Um, they can literally just contact us at our website, SubmitTheDocumentary.com or a link off of your website to us. And they just have to hit the contact button, ask to have a screening of the film, and we will make a screening of the film available for their group or for them individually, online or offline. I appreciate it. Uh, Les Ottolinghi, he is the producer of Submit the Documentary. SubmitTheDocumentary.com is the link is on my site, Kogo.com, keyword Sully. Just scroll down a little bit. You can actually see a clip of the documentary. Very powerful stuff, and all because you can go right to the website. Thanks so much, Les. I appreciate it.